Thank you very much, uh, Shubh uh, Binoy, the Consulate General of India. Thank you for honoring me with the invitation. Samir, uh, President of the ORF, thank you for your leadership on these issues and um, as always, so succinctly setting the scene for our discussion uh, today. Now, we all know the SDGs are in trouble. Uh, the Secretary General has said that the SDGs need to be rescued. So one of the points I want to make today is that India could lead the rescue party. Um, so uh, 2015, when we were talking about the MDGs, is a, a challenge as well. And China's development helped us rescue the MDGs. So my hope um, is that in 2030, it'll be India that'll help us deliver progress on the SDGs. And you know the stark reality, only 17% of the SDGs targets uh, are on uh, track. Now, that leaves us with five years. So what is it that we can do to accelerate progress on the SDGs? leveraging India's experiencing, keeping in mind the difficult situation, including on financing for uh, development. Uh, I will offer three thoughts. And the first one is harnessing Yuva Shakti, the power of the youth. India has one of the youngest populations in the world. And if you look broadly at the global south, the median age in Africa, for example, it's the same situation. So how can we have policies? How can we have the skilling that's needed, the financing ecosystems that are needed to allow youth to express themselves in the economic and social development field? I think that's a, the, that should be the number one priority for governments. I met a bunch of startups from India, AI startups from India two weeks ago. And I was really inspired by what they are doing, not following uh, the model of the Silicon Valley or other places where large language models are being built. We're picking up small language models, energy efficient, more context respecting, uh, more useful in uh, a developing setting. So I think this is the kind of, but they need the scale up financing. They need the agile regulation that allows them to express themselves. There's a lot of creative force, generative force inside the youth. How do we unleash that? That's number one. The second challenge and opportunity is Nari Shakti. Uh, the power that can be unleashed if we have... Um, more respect, more opportunities, more safety. Uh, and in fact, you know, uh, more of a permissionless space for women to express themselves, women and girls. I think if you look at labor participation rates, again, the evidence is clear. Uh, just a 10% jump in the labor participation rate of women in India or in other parts of the global south can have a significant impact on GDP growth. So what kind of policies are needed to unleash that delta, that additionality? I think that should be, again, a key priority uh, for um, uh, policymakers. Uh, you know, safety in, in our cities, uh, better public transport, uh, schools uh, that uh, take into account sometimes the special challenges that girls face in accessing education. Technology, and there is still a gender divide in terms of access to uh, the internet, access to devices, meaningful connectivity. So I think this should be the, and, and finally, say technology shakti. Yuva shakti, nari shakti, technology shakti. Now, India has had a good experience, a good run with digital public infrastructure. Half a billion people moved into the financial mainstream thanks to uh, Aadhaar, thanks to the India stack. In fact, it's a model for the rest of the world. Uh, the stack approach, digital ID, the payments layer, and the data exchange layer. But sometimes success blinds us to our opportunity. We become complacent. I think 
we need to leverage the DPI's foundations, not just in India, again, everywhere. Um, Binoy, you mentioned uh, the East African community. Veronica, Veronica Enduva uh, was there at the Digital Cooperation Day on Monday. <laughs> Uh, and she spoke about interoperability in East Africa. Uh, so MPESA is not DPIs, it's a closed system, but DPIs can unleash uh, more opportunity. So going beyond financial inclusion uh, to trade, to uh, scale for entrepreneurs. And then importantly, as a foundation for the kind of data sets that are needed for those small language models to do their magic. So looking at the DPI AI interface in a strategic way from a policy perspective is crucial. Yesterday, uh, Secretary Methi, uh, Mr. Krishnan, I think he'll be speaking here as well, um, participated in a discussion we held on AI capacity building. And this is my last point. So he mentioned how uh, the availability of GPUs is going up, 38,000 at last count a number of open source models, the talent, the use cases are multiplying. So how can you leverage DPIs to curate the data sets that come together in these areas of urgency and priority, health, agriculture, the green transition, the management of smart grids. Uh, so that should be a key, key priority. And to close, I think solutions, yes, they are important. We have specific problems, we need to address them. But even more important for me is solution making. So enabling solution making, having more agency autonomy. Some people call it digital sovereignty. Uh, others call it deep tech, uh, you know, whatever we label it. I think you need to go beyond copycatting solutions or specific uh, problems and approaches to them to the deeper enabling of solution making. The Secretary General's report on AI capacity building, which is landing with two other critical pieces of the global governance of AI. I know global governance and globalist approaches are being challenged. Good, you know, challenge is always good to, to inspire you to do more. So there is the policy aspect, the global dialogue on AI governance. There is the science aspect. We need independent assessments of the power, pace, direction, and opportunities and risks associated with this technology. So those two are being launched tomorrow by the President of the General Assembly in a formal meeting. The third piece is capacity building, this deeper solution making enabling. So access to compute, access to data sets, collaboration, South-South triangular cooperation around data sets so that can, we can build those open shareable models that help us get to our goals in 2030. Good luck with the rest of the Day's discussion and really honored to be here. So nice to see, see many friends. Shambhi, our resident coordinator uh, in Delhi, the RCs for whom we are targeting a suite of services in terms of their digital transformation supporting capability will play a critical role as we localize the SDGs, as we drive progress on the ground. Thank you so much.